Although most of us probably expected the first main boss of Shadow of the Earth Tree to really crank up the difficulty, I don't think many of us could have anticipated this. I am not kidding when I say this is one of the most demanding bosses I have ever fought. Even compared to Melania, the margin for error is just vanishingly small. Punish windows are minuscule, your own mistakes are damn near death sentences, panic rolling feels like the only solution despite it getting you killed 100% of the time. His many complex elemental shenanigans, all with slight differences in how to handle his infused moveset, add a layer of tension and discomfort that's absolutely omnipresent. Relentless does not even begin to describe this guy, and you'll spend a ton of your early attempts thinking there are legitimately no windows to attack. Slowly you learn, however, like all great FromSoft bosses, of which the Divine Beast Dancing Lion, great name by the way, absolutely is, and you start to dance and flow with his moveset rather than cower from it. His legit one-shot grab attack? Well, it's actually as easy as to dodge, and it allows for an incredibly generous window to launch attacks right into his defenseless head. His never-ending bite combos? There's actually a way to always know when he's going to continue and when he's going to pause, thus allowing the player to either enter survival mode or offense mode. His spinning elemental spewage? You can just fucking jump. If you're like me and you've played other Souls games since your last Elden Ring playthrough, then this thought process might take a while to come to you. But don't be ashamed because I tried iframing it forever before remembering that, yeah, jumping was actually a thing in this game. Once you solve the first phase, which is only the first quarter of his massive health bar, you're then greeted with his constantly shifting elemental attacks. His moveset stays practically identical, adding in a single attack or maybe two for each given element, but the way you handle them varies tremendously, just making the amount of moves you have to learn how to handle through the roof. His electricity gave me the most issues by far, with his lightning bolt coming out insanely fast and a lingering shockwave being left around the ground after his every attack, meaning you have to dodge him, then precisely dodge the shockwave, then usually dodge him again, and the cycle just continues and continues. You might find yourself thinking, when do I actually get to deal damage? That's the neat thing. You don't. It's tricky, but there are opportunities if you can position yourself well, which for me often meant dodging away from him and moving closer to deal damage when I had the opportunity. Admittedly, it was easier with my weapon of choice being the Moon Veil, meaning I had significantly more range than a normal melee weapon. But I actually found keeping your distance, sometimes even straight up running away to reposition, work really well. As he walks slowly towards you, you can jockey for position and wait for him to make the first move, almost always giving you ample time to see what he's going for and act accordingly. He is fast and relentless, but he doesn't auto-rush you when you try to heal like some other FromSoft bosses. He typically gives you that chance to pop a heal before re-engaging. He's fast and constantly moving when you're in his range, but aside from his lightning bolt, he doesn't possess any real speedy range attacks or the ability to close the distance in an instant if you're far enough away. If you need to gain some distance, you can. Presentation-wise, he's right on par with the rest of Elden Ring's main bosses. He looks intimidating and scary and just a little bit unsettling. His arena is large and impressive, the castle leading up to him is a great way to start the DLC. Hard and compelling, but not overly long or confusing. His name alone is raw as hell and the soundtrack is amazing. The health bar may be a bit bloated, but the fight does not overstay its welcome. Depending on the console you're playing on, mine being PC, the quick load times and non-existent boss run mean you only have to wait mere seconds between attempts. Combine that with how goddamn batshit crazy hardy hits, and you could easily find yourself dying three or four times inside of a minute. It's quite humbling. It's quite thrilling. It's quite challenging. It's quite rewarding. Souls in a nutshell. This boss really throws me back to Dark Souls 1 and its DLC. Though Divine Beast may not be your first boss in Shadow of the Earth Tree, he's likely to be your first main one, and the first boss in Dark Souls DLC also upped the difficulty, and most notably the speed. They also both happen to be lions. Nice. What an incredible start to what promises to be an incredible DLC. I'm not going to formally rank this guy or give him a number score as that wouldn't really be fair, but I can confidently say that this boss fits right in amidst the other upper echelon of Elden Ring's bosses. We Souls fans are so blessed.